Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back. And Julie, happy 4th of July. Indeed, you as well. So what was your favorite part of the 4th of July weekend? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've always liked fireworks and hanging out with family and, you know, just taking a breath. So I think that was pretty fun. But uh, building the <laughs> building our own housing inventory for uh, people here in Dorado, since we also have nothing for sale, and you and me and Zoe, mostly you and Zoe, Building your little beach house, I thought that was pretty fun. Yes, we built a beach house for crabs is what Julia is describing. And I have to say, <laughs> though you can look at the pictures on Facebook and Instagram, it's not much to look at. That thing actually was designed for high winds. Indeed. It had a, uh, a roof structure that consisted of four different layers. Mm-hmm. Zoe made some uh, bet- with seaweed and sand and water. She made a nice little plaster that worked out really well. Yeah. So, it um, even had a, uh, a lap pool and uh, <laughs> some landscaping. So that was fun. I I thought that was enjoyable. Well, so that was our uh, holiday weekend. Hopefully you guys had a relaxing holiday weekend as well. So we're going to finish up where we left off. This is the uh, series that we started on the fact that you can still make this your best year ever. I started out the last two shows by reminding all of you, and this is a friendly reminder that you really effectively only have about 90 work days left this year oh i'm i know i'm stepping oh okay. we're getting that on point the, number okay, seven. that's point number seven it's officially okay. point number seven well then, we were just working <laughs> ahead before right and so if you're looking for the actual precise concise sense of direction uh that you want to have that you must have not just for the rest of this year but to have really great momentum going into next year i know it's kind of amazing to think about that but it's true. I strongly encourage you all to get your real estate treasure map done. And we've done all the heavy lifting for you. All you've got to do is text 2021. Just do it right now if you've not done this yet. Text 2021 to 47372. And when you do, we'll text you back a link and you can download the real estate treasure map along with several other free books. So go ahead and text 2021 to 47372. That I think the treasure map is 63 pages. And um, we are probably going to reformat the whole book sometime in the next probably 12 to, well, maybe 6 to 12 months, depending on how many challenges Julie's looking forward mm-hmm. to having. Indeed. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that this is a, the perfect plan that will give you that ultimate sense of direction. So if you're feeling encouraged, but you want to keep up your momentum, get your treasure map done. If you're feeling behind the ball, not having the year that you wanted to have happen, well, you still have time to make this your best year ever. Get your real estate treasure map done. What matters most is that you do what matters most every day. Start with getting your real estate treasure map done. So text 2021 to 47372. That's right. And and I also also want to remind those of you who have done your treasure map, make sure you're using your treasure yeah. map uh, because, you know, that's the whole point of it is keeping your head screwed on straight, letting you know what's most important in your day. And that's related back to our points here, making sure that you are on track or ahead for the rest of the year. So point number seven, we've been talking about how many days are you actually working every month between now and the end of the year? So get into your calendar. We're about to uh, have our planner help them with us. I was us. just thinking that exact same thing. Oh, yes, we do have a planner, a Harris Rules planner that Julie's uh, – basically, it's in final draft form. We just don't like the cover. Everything else is great. So look for that, and that is actually one of the things you're supposed to – so the planner, if you've never used one before, basically it's a, a book, right? And you uh, you know, will fill out um, – for every every three months, You know, it's basically a quarterly planner – and then you buy a new one every, uh, obviously every three months. But the idea is that you are keeping track of your daily activities as uh, were described from you having completed the real estate treasure it's map. It's basically like uh, hitting your goals daily. And as you turn the page, it says my dollar productive activities for the day are, which is your reminder that you've got to stay out of work theater and in profitability. And remember, work theater is the thing that's seductive for everybody. Anytime you're basically doing something that will... Uh, not result in you getting rejected, it's work theater. I mean, that's really kind of the bottom line. So if you're not hearing the word no at least five times a day, chances are you're filling your day with work theater. Uh, We talk about that all the time, and I know that, and the reason that, you know, if that, um, just the very thought of putting yourself in a position to hear the word no five times a day, if that revolts you, I bet you your income is a direct 
uh, mirror of basically your uh, your willingness or unwillingness to do the real work of real estate. Because guys, at the end of the day, you're not going to find what you're looking for by looking at screens. You're not going to be finding what you're looking for by the other side of listing the Mickey Mouse about social networking and buying leads and all the rest of it. Well, you can buy your leads, but you won't, won't make any profit and that's just getting worse. So absolutely positively get your real estate treasure map done. And Julie's advice right there on point number seven was really think about that. You're going to take a, here's this, the, the theory basically. You're going to have a calendar from here to the end of the year. And you're going to put dollar signs in the days you're going to be working. And then the days you're not going to be working, you can put whatever you want to put to symbolize the non-working days. But it's not as many days as you think. There's not 180 work days left this year. Some of you are saying, thank God, I realize. Well, look at the holiday weekend we just came off of. Yeah. Okay, so the holiday was actually on Sunday. But mm-hmm. you and I both know most people took Thursday through well, Monday Julie, here, off. I'm going to show you something. Right? Look, look, I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> mm-hmm. This is actually in my calendar for today. I didn't even realize this. Oh, because it's uh, and, yeah, because it recognized felt, right. as today so, or observed so that you get that Monday off. Well, but yeah. so to your point, mm-hmm. I mean, sure. Google basically puts into everybody's schedule that today, even though it's not the fourth, was actually a holiday. Guys, when we were growing up, most of you, you their fifth was not a holiday, right? <laughs> no. There, and I'll tell you what's more is the last week of October. You celebrated, quote unquote, you know, celebrated with air quotes, uh, Halloween for like you know three hours on the thirty first. Well, yeah, you watched the Great Pumpkin and trick or treated, and you were done. Yeah, and you ate some candy, and your parents threw out the rest, and it was over. Exactly, and that was basically Halloween. Now people take like a week off. There's more and more hol- adult holiday parties, right? You know, Halloween parties, and there's more and more holidays that are sneaking in too. So really, when you look at your work schedule for the rest of the year, you don't have 180 days. You know, you can maybe you'll have fewer than this, maybe you'll have more, but really theoretically, you have maybe 90 to 100 and work days, viable work days left this year. Meaning, you're going to work when other people are ready to sign contracts. But if you decide you're going to work during Christmas week, or as is with the case with most people, Christmas month, you yeah. know, good luck getting people to be motivated. I'm not saying you shouldn't still be making effort that particular month, but what I am suggesting is had you made the effort. Oh, leading up to that particular month, you really don't have to make that much effort in December because you've already done what you were supposed to right. do. Well, so for example, let's say you're somebody that's following your treasure map. You know your magic number of listings. That's the number of listings you have to keep at all times to meet or exceed your monthly goals. Active listings. And let's say that you've gotten good at that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you really, your number is, you know, you, you have a pretty good average sale price. If you're doing three per month, you're in good shape, but you take it to five. Why would you want to be working ahead like that? Because as soon as you hit about two weeks before Thanksgiving, at least two of those sellers are going to say, you know what, let's take it off during the holidays. For sure. And if you only had three and those same two decided they're going to take it off, well, you're virtually listless at this point. That's why you have to take this seriously now, even though it seems too early. And again, yes, I know it's strange to be thinking about the new year now, but here's the reality of it. Think about the new year now, because what you do now effectively pays you in 90 days. In 90 days, we're going to be staring down at the holidays, and you're going to have a lot of holiday excuses. Now, we do give you lots of great um, you know, uh, ways to overcome some of those holiday excuses, a lot of misperceptions people have about having their houses on, uh, on the market in the holidays. Uh, but bottom line, a lot of them are going to not care, and they're going to just want to take their houses okay. off the market, and you're still going to need inventory going into the year. Nothing will ensure your best year ever more than having at least your magic number of listings as you roll into the, the calendar year. Don't try to rebuild your momentum uh, in the winter, in January. Yeah. That's the worst time of year to do it because here's what happens, and here's the pattern that most of you will experience or are experiencing. You will not follow our advice, or maybe this is the first time you've you know essentially discovered Julie and I, which is possible, I suppose. And let's say you don't actually start your new year until the new year, until the actual calendar year. That means you're going to be spending realistically the first 60 to 90 days of 2022 trying to build momentum. And then you're going to take some listings, you're going to do some business, and then you're going to go into servicing mode. So then the second quarter of 2022, you're going to be servicing some of your transactions, and then you're going to lose momentum, and then you're going to retry uh, right, essentially restart the fuse, say about this time next year. And that's the cycle that most of you experience. That's the reason your income goes up and down. That's the reason you have maybe a good month or a good three months. And then you will basically, you know, you won't get anywhere because maybe you make great profit for three months, but then the following three months, you don't make any profit. And so as a result of that, you spent all the money you could have otherwise been investing. It's because you're not working 
consistently. You're not doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do at the highest level. That goes back to really completing your real estate treasure map. And also, those of you who are ready to go to the next level, which all of you should be by now, why don't you join Premier Coaching? Why don't you actually take the next step in your real estate career and your personal life? And why don't you become a Premier Coaching member? We've made it incredibly easy for you. You can join Premier Coaching for around $100 a month. And all you've got to do is go over to timandjulieharris.com, click on Coaching, click on Premier, and join. It's not difficult. Super easy. Or if you want to do it from your phone, you can also go to the website on your phone, obviously. But if you want to just uh, you know, have us send you the link directly, just text the word SUCCESS to 47372. Text the word SUCCESS to 47372. How will you feel having a coach who will speak with you every day on a semi-private coaching call every single workday for the rest of the year? Do you think you'll accomplish more? Do you think you'll learn more? Do you think you'll learn how to be a listing agent quicker? Why wouldn't you do this? There's no good reason other than the fact that you might not take your real estate business that seriously. For the rest of you, it does not matter how successful you think you are. If you want to build your success to the next level, become a Premier Coaching member. Text the word SUCCESS to 47372 or just go over to timandjulieharris.com and click on Coaching and click on Premier and join for around $100 a month. Exactly. Okay. So remember, inconsistent work equals inconsistent results. Our point of getting you guys pre-programmed early enough is to get caught up and go into fourth quarter with those listings instead of trying to do it in January. So uh, let's see. Point number eight, every day must have the following. Lead generation, proactive lead generation. You know, we can't call it prospecting because, you know, we'll get hives. But lead (laughs) generation, uh, furiously fast lead follow-up, pre-qualifying, and ideally going on appointments in the afternoon. Get a transaction coordinator if you're stuck in the weeds managing your deals. At some point, that does become work theater. It's important, but this is why the real estate gods with small g created transaction coordinators. And how do you know you need one? Probably doing three to four transactions per month consistently for 90 days. Yeah. Um, unless they're kind of easy peasy like new construction or something, but you need you know, a transaction coordinator. But real, Yeah, exactly. So the reason is because what some of you will do is you'll hide, you'll basically spend That's all right. your days doing your deals and you'll stop doing the very things that took for you to get those deals in the first place. It's not because you don't have enough time to do both. Understand what Julie's saying. You do have enough time to manage you know, two or three or even five pendings. That's no big deal. All of you can do that. And I'll tell you, uh, Julie, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Harris Rules, Mm -hmm. after having studied transaction coordinators and building teams, Mm -hmm. didn't we determine basically that the average transaction coordinator can handle 20 to 25 deals per month? And some of them way more than that. Yeah. And the reason is, is because the automated processes of all the, you know, the dot loops and all the other... Well, they're systematized. Right, exactly. And here's the thing. There are agents that kind of get tangled up in like, only I can manage my deals. Right. And I want to be the one who provides great customer service. And I respect that. That's a good thought. However, you have to realize that really good transaction coordinators are actually better at it than you because that's their full-time job. They're not trying to fit it in in between other appointments. Well, so to Julie's point, don't uh, uh, essentially remove yourself from the transaction. Make it so that every Friday you meet with your transaction coordinator, you review the files, and then you call that client and you just, you know, check in with them. Just now that you know what's going on at the file, you check in with them. Everything's sure. fine and dandy. Obviously, you can log in. You don't actually have to meet with someone, quote unquote. You can just log into the, you know, contact uh, the, the transaction management software and see what's going on. But at the end of the day, guys, don't get, don't believe that a real estate business or a normal real estate business goes from work, work, work in terms of working, trying to generate lists, uh, you know, business and transactions to then manage, manage, manage. That's right. never going to win for you. You're going to end the year. You're going to maybe even win some awards and some plaques and you're going to go to your checking account and you're not going to have very much money in there. Then your accountant's going to be telling you, you owe money in taxes. And you're going to be going, how the hell is it that I have mm-hmm. not gotten anywhere uh, better off financially when I'm actually increasing the number of transactions? It's because the manner in which you're you're doing most of the things right. The only things you're doing wrong is you're working at doing the real work only sporadically. That's the reason you need to hire us as a coach. We will make it so you're doing the real work of real estate every morning, and we're going to help you basically scale up your real estate business. Get unstuck. This is how you do it. That's right. So uh, let's see. Get a transaction coordinator if you're stuck in your weeds managing your deals. I think we're going to save the other two points for uh, tomorrow's podcast. No, no, go ahead. We'll, go ahead. we'll lead them into that. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay, so point number nine, use the daily success game. We'll explain that in a second. If you're a premier coaching client and keep track of your dollar productive activities using the game. So this is something, the word is game, excuse me, gamify, G-A-M-I-F-Y. 
That means taking something that maybe you're procrastinating or maybe you don't always do what you're supposed well, to the, do. It's the drudgery it, of doing what you don't want right, to do when you don't want to. you're turning it yeah. into a game. You're making right. it more fun. You're keeping track. You're keeping score. And it also focuses you really tightly into things, the actual activities, the stuff that should be in your planner, for example, that actually lead to productivity, to profit. Now, so along those lines, when we do this podcast tomorrow, um, and it's basically called Your Daily Success Game, we are going to include half of the notes on the game um, on timandjulieharris.com. So you can go over there and print them off, but they're not all the notes, they're only half the notes. Um, and so just go over there and just so you can get a visual of what we're talking about, what we've created. But the gist of it is, is essentially your, your goal is to create um, 50 points every day. You know, it's funny, Julie, as mm -hmm. I'm saying this out loud, you know what I was just thinking of? What? Zoe and the Marble Game. I know. I know. That's true. But, you know, it worked so well. So it was actually 50 marbles. So here's yes, how – this is what we gamified Zoe. So to the extent that, you know – That you can. <laughs> basically, she, we're, we're going to go on our U.S. tour starting, uh, you know, obviously the 6th, you know, today. And so we're going to go on the, our world tour. We're going to – U.S. tour. We're going to be driving to many, many different cities. We're going to be uh, – uh, essentially broadcasting where we are. We're going to do a, lot, a live vlog multiple times a day. Uh, follow us on Instagram at timandjulieharris.com. We'll be posting up pictures where we are, where, gonna, where we're going to be. And we'd love to um, you know, meet as many of you as possible. So we're going to be in Dallas. But then we're going to uh, probably go up to, um, did we decide Colorado? Mm -hmm. We don't even know where in Colorado. I don't know yet. Right? We've got we, people to visit along the way, but we we'll do. see how it goes. <laughs> we have actual, uh, virtually no itinerary, but we're going to be traveling all over the United States uh, for two months. And so please, if you are in the way of where we're going <laughs> and uh, just follow us on Instagram, we'll be telling you where we think we'll be. And look, if we're going to, you know, we'll stay overnight at one particular town and we'll be telling you where we'll be staying and let's have some coffee. Let's sit around and go on a walk. You can, you know, maybe show us the highlights of the town, whatever. Let's make this an opportunity for all of us to get to know each other better. Uh, but here's the deal. The marbles. Yeah, I'm right back to the marbles. So we had, um, Zoe had to earn 50 marbles. And the way she earned marbles is Julie wrote, Julie took a glass jar and she took this sticker. Now remember, Zoe's seven and a half for those of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And she's our daughter. We're not talking about, we didn't do this for an Random assistant. Children. Right. <laughs> and, and then on the outside of the glass jar, she wrote how Zoe uh, gets a marble. And do you remember what those points well, were? How to earn a chore marble. Right. And they, these are, you know, relatively simple things, but things that she likes to procrastinate and argue about. Like, you know, getting out of your pajamas on your own and getting yourself dressed before, Argu after breakfast. Arguing loses her a marble. Arguing a lose. So there's two stickers. One is how to earn a chore marble, and the other one is how to lose a marble. Well, not earn a chore. How to earn a marble, how to, how to a lose marble. a marble. Right. Yes. Okay, so dressing yourself, clearing the table after meals, whether it was your mess or not, doesn't matter. Uh, let's see, what else? She has to do homework pages because we're trying to make sure she stays smart during the summer. She can't be mean to Max, her French bulldog. Yeah, that's how you lose, lose a, marble. a marble. You can't uh, hit or kick anybody or any of that sort of thing. <laughs> I uh, can't be mean to Max. Uh, what else? Arguing will lose you a marble. And so this this like turned her around within a day. Instantly. Well, yeah. it's not that she was a bad kid before, no, no. but she, and, you know, a little argumentative. And then we had a bowl of marbles, 50 marbles, and then when she earned a marble, she got, you know went there and she very carefully chose the glass marble that she wanted. Then she liked mm -hmm. to drop it in the jar with and hearing it <laughs> clank around in the bottom of the jar. She even says that's very satisfying. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but but if she if she's a little bit surly, if she doesn't follow the directions, if there's a little arguing going on, then she loses a marble. So we've been doing this for maybe a month. Yep. Okay, and so she's over uh, 50 marbles now. She's got 51 marbles. Uh, yeah. And so she's going to be able to go on the trip. But that was the best mm -hmm. uh, child behavioral modification better system. Better than stickers. Better, better than, than, stickers, better than threats. Better than bribes. Yeah, but look what happened. Within, I would say, two or three days, she was extra gamifying it mm -hmm. because she would, would uh, negotiate how to get more marbles faster. Yeah, right? of course. Which is different behavior than before where you know it was like arguing and threatening and all the rest, right? So isn't that interesting that even in her little seven and a half year old brain, she was already using this concept of gamifying. She was gamifying it, trying to make it more interesting for her. Yes. And yeah. so then doing the homework pages became a little bit more fun. Right. And, you know, she was playing with Max more and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's I mean, good. So this applies to all humans, not just tiny ones. Yeah. Like, like she's got summer homework uh, and she's supposed to be doing how many pages? It's a lot, right? It's a lot. It's an endless yeah. supply. It's an endless supply. And so she wasn't doing any of it. And we'd have to, you know, she'd just argue and she'd, and when she would do it, she'd do a terrible job. So now all we had to say was, we'll give you a marble for every single thing 
uh, every single page of homework you do that mom and dad say you did it at the highest level because she's not going to be doing any half-assed work. No. And she did. She did a great job. Mm -hmm. And now we need to take the marbles thing on the road. I know. i got to figure out how to do that. <laughs> not bringing a glass jar, but yeah, yeah I'll, I'll find right. something. I know, but it's great. It is. So it that's, works. But that's, that, the so that's our preamble to tomorrow's show. Right. That's just the gamification of we did with Zoe, and you guys can do the same thing. It makes life a lot more, I think, uh, it makes it more fun, but it also just, it's a step away from the monotony, and it puts you into a point where you're looking at the things you should be doing. And the, the, the way that things are point, are we score different things. Uh, actually, they're all five points, basically. Yes, but you can mix and match. Yeah. And you can repeat certain things, right? So like for Zoe's marbles, if, you know, maybe the table doesn't need cleared, so she's not going to earn a marble that way, she can do more homework pages because they all count. And that's what she did. Right? So what, when I'll get into the details of this tomorrow. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that tomorrow. In the meantime, if you guys want to talk to Julie and I about joining us at our EXP group, our EXP group is called Libertas. You can uh, just text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Please do not call. Do, um, feel free to text. Um, and you can also go over to whylibertas.com, whylibertas.com, or just text, you guessed it, EXP to 47372. Text EXP to 47372. All of you are or will soon want to be seriously considering uh, joining EXP Realty. So the next question you're going to want to ask yourself is who do you choose to have as your sponsor? And Julie and I are formally applying for the job of being your sponsor at EXP Realty. So just text EXP to 47372. And that's our proposal as to why you might want to join with our group. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>